Oh, good morning, everyone, and thanks, Des. And it's an absolute delight and uh, pleasure to uh, join with you here all today on uh, World MS Day. And as this week is uh, National Reconciliation Week, I too would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, and also to pay my respects to their elders, past and present. I also especially want to acknowledge uh, the work of uh, the staff and board of uh, MSL, but also to pay a tribute to all of you here today, if you are living with MS or a care of someone with MS or a family member of someone with MS, because um, it's, it's very important that the worldwide MS community does come together today on World MS Day, which occurs every year on the 30th of May, with events and campaigns that take place right around the world throughout the event of May. And this year, uh, just to follow on from what Alison was talking about, the 2018 campaign slogan is bringing us closer, which I think, Alison, based on you know what you've just shared with us now, it's, it's all about us standing together with our tequila, with our heart. And uh, I just want to thank you for what you had to say then, because MS Day is all about uh, bringing the whole global MS community together to share our stories, to raise awareness and to campaign with and for everyone affected by multiple sclerosis. Now having worked for 30 years in uh, health, uh, 16 years in the pharmaceutical industry, I think that uh, the 2018 MS theme of research is very apt because finding a cure for MS must be our ultimate goal. Ever since MS was first identified, MS has been the subject of intense worldwide research. But unfortunately, the cause and the cure still remains elusive. Therefore, the worldwide effort to, re to search for a cure for MS continues, with research investment a priority both in Australia and overseas, uh, especially as, uh, and Des, I've got around 25,000 people. Uh, in Australia, more than two million people worldwide are diagnosed with MS. While finding a cure for MS is the ultimate goal, we know that it is just as vitally important to also invest in research to find ways of living well with the disease until a cure is found. Research is also starting to make huge leap forwards, not just in our understanding of MS, but also in the many ways in which MS can be treated and disease progression significantly delayed, especially as evidence favours early treatment, which equates to better outcomes. And we know that investing in research really does pay off. And just this year in February, two Australian researchers made an exciting breakthrough in early diagnosis when they discovered the world's first blood biomarker for MS. Macquarie University's Dr Edwin Lim and Professor Gillies Gulliman led a major study that uncovered the chemical identifier. They expect within two years that the breakthrough will lead to a simple blood test to identify a person's type of MS, which will allow clinicians to quickly and more accurately adapt treatments for those living with, with the disease. Time out. Uh, but now, while that breakthrough is fantastic, uh, two years, as we know, is a f still a very, very long time. And as a registered nurse, I've looked after many people with MS, and I've also had close family members and friends who are also living with MS. And the fact is, we all know here, MS is a very frustrating and unpredictable disease. Its episodes can occur at varying times, affecting different areas of the central nervous system, and it's not easy when we are faced with this life-changing diagnosis to embrace new challenges and continue with a full and independent day-to-day -day life. Plus, MS also has a significant impact on the lives of family and friends of a person living with the disease, which is why at a state level we provide a range of services through the Tasmanian Health Services, as well as funding to MSL for advocacy, advice, information, case management and local coordination and development. And from looking at today's program, you have many wonderful guest speakers today on a broad range of topics, especially on research. Now, a program like today requires a lot of effort behind the scenes, and I just want to um, pay tribute and acknowledge the great work of MSL and everyone else involved in uh, organising today's event. 
uh, to make sure that it is a success, but more importantly, that it does bring us all together. Now, I've also been asked to briefly touch uh, on the fact that on the 1st of July, there will be two new departments formed. Uh, one will be the Department of Health, so all your services that you would have uh, received through the THS, that will be under the new Department of Health. But what was uh, usually the backslash to the DHHS, the Department of Human Services, that's now moving into a new department called Communities Tasmania. Uh, Communities Tasmania is about trying to look at things a bit differently and holistically because for too many years um, people were siloed. For example, uh, you know, I was the Minister for Disability Services and well, Community Development, and but um, you, too many people were having up to 22 different caseworkers in their life and it's about bringing these things together. So in this new Department of Communities will be what you would have known as the old human services, uh, children and youth services, uh, disability services, all the old community services, uh, all the DPAC peak bodies of uh, Why Not, um, RSL, uh, Carers Tasmania, uh, and uh, multicultural uh, organisations, also the sport and rec organisations, um, so that if we can look at everyone a lot more holistic because the fact is that if you're touching one, you're probably touching quite a few different areas as well. So that'll be uh, starting up on the 1st of July. Um, it, it, you shouldn't notice any difference in your services, but we're always open to feedback. So if you, what the services you're currently coming, receiving from disability services will be under the new communities for Tasmania, but phone numbers don't change and it all stays pretty seamless for you at the front, but it's just about bringing the people with the right skill sets together. But anyway, just uh, I just want to wish you all the best on uh, World MS Day. It's a great program that you've got to look forward to today, great guest speakers, and it's now a great pleasure that I declare the day officially open. Have a great day. Thank you. So, so, Minister, uh, on behalf of all of us here today and uh, MSL, we thank you for your continued effort in providing services for people with MS, and uh, we look forward to uh, working closely with you as we move forward under the National Disability Insurance Scheme, and wish you well on your new portfolio in terms of, uh, what is it, Community? Communities Tasmania. Communities Tasmania. So, all the very best, and thank you for coming this morning. Thank you very much. Now, Des, so hopefully you take it all the right way, but because I have to declare these, in the spirit of reconciliation, I might actually give these to Alison to take back to um, La Prenna, if that's all right, because I think during Reconciliation Week, it had, um, La Prenna is a great organisation. They do a lot of great things in the community, and um, this way you've really blessed both of us today, because I'd like to pass it on. Thank you very much.